Hi, how is everybody? It's Thursday night and uh, I haven't done a live for a while because I have been watching and observing and trying to educate my followers and help understand some of the momentous things are ha that are happening in our country. Of course, we're first with the pandemic and now obviously with what's going on matter matter movement and um and i was really excited to have someone take over my account hey, yesterday. Hey. Oh. <laughs> and here she is uh i don't know if you all follow but this is unique jones gibson and her family hi everybody how are hi. you hi. <laughs> look at them it, unique why don't you introduce uh the kids and your cute husband in the back <laughs> sure so this is my husband chris this is hi. Sage. Say hi. Hi. <laughs> this is Chase. Hi. hi. And this is Omari. Hi. <laughs> hi. How are you here? I know that 11, um, uh, right? Yep. Got Chase is 11. And then Ahari is what? Omari is 7. Ahari, yeah. And then Sage is 3? Correct. That's right. Hi, kids. How are you? Good. How's, every, how's everybody doing? Are you all, did you all have to do school at home? Yes. yes. <laughs> yes. Are you getting kind of tired of it or things loosening up there in Maryland? I know you guys are in Bowie. Are you getting tired of homeschooling school, at home? No. No? No. <laughs> Good. Oh. A lot of time, huh? Are you getting, are you getting tired? Yes. <laughs> well, you, all, you all are so cute, and I was so glad that you could be part of your mom's Instagram takeover. What did you think of the whole idea? What did you think of the idea of taking up on, on Instagram? Okay. You thought it was pretty cool? Mm -hmm. Talk to Miss Katie. <laughs> what did you all think? Did you think it was fun? Did you watch the things that your mom posted? Jay said, I thought it was pretty cool. It was cool. And I was so grateful to have your mom share all the incredible work that she's been doing. And I love because of them, we can. I know you've been studying uh, really fi important figures in black history. And I was going to ask Chase, is there anyone who's really inspired you that you've learned uh, about as a result of your mom's work? Um... Okay, thank you for a little while. Yeah. Amari, do you have a, a, a figure Back in history? Uh, I know the recent box was all about Muhammad Ali. You portrayed Muhammad yeah. Ali. Yes. Do you want to talk about Muhammad Ali? Yeah, tell us why you admire him. Um, <laughs> Chase, go ahead. I really admire him because outside of him also being a boxer, he also stood out, he was also an activist. That's right. And, uh, and, a, and a very important activist. And I love the fact that your, your mom's helping all kinds of kids learn about these important people, Hi. black history, because I've always thought it was ridiculous that, that it's only one month of the year, which is so ridiculous in my mind. So I'm so glad that you're doing it and that so many families are now learning together. Yeah. yeah, through the box. Yeah. Anyway, so we're we're going to just chat about our whole switch, but I just wanted to say hello and you this is a beautiful family. Hi everybody. Say hi. hi. You guys, guys going to say bye. <laughs> All right, bye you guys. All right, bye. Hi. Um wait, so I wanted to just talk about um talk a little bit about what we did because it was so much fun and actually so important. I wouldn't say fun was the, the right way to describe it. I think it was really important. And this was part of, uh, of an effort called, uh, which we share the mic now, and it was about 50 uh, white women who handed over their platform to 50 different black women. And, and let's talk about why you thought this was a good idea. I said yes immediately. 
Did you have any reservations about doing it? Absolutely not. Uh, I trusted the individuals who asked me, Lovey approached me and told me about the intention of the campaign. And I thought that it was uh, revolutionary. I thought it was, you know, something that has never happened before and something that could really amplify some important voices and perspectives and help to get us closer to where we're trying to be as a country. And, and why did you think it was so important? Can you just talk about the premise? I know you and Lovey are good friends, mm -hmm. how she came up with the idea and, and why you thought it was such a critically important thing to participate in. Yeah, so I know that we had saw a lot of, like a number of us started to receive a lot of followers, right? Right. So uh, we noticed that a lot of white women were following us and saying that they were trying to learn. And we thought that that was great, but we also thought like, well, how can we keep this going, right? Like, how do you build on this momentum? And then also, how do you move white women from just being allies to being co-conspirators with us and what we're trying to do as a collective? And so, um, Levy, um, Bose, uh, Stacy, and Glennon Doyle, I believe, got together and said, you know what? We know some um, influential white women. Levy, Bose, you know some um, amazing black women who have um, um, good things to say and have been doing the work for a long time. What if we all uh, exchanged Instagram accounts so that we could leverage your platforms to really elevate those voices and to really share unique perspectives across um, their, their ecosystem? And uh, I thought it was brilliant. And obviously, people in social media and, and media in general responded with the same thoughts. I thought so too. And I think that we so often live in silos. Mm -hmm. And it so important that we get different kinds of perspective and actually expand our horizons, I think, in everyday life, not just for one day, obviously unique, but every day. And I think that people really want to be committed to that. Were you, were you nervous about, you know, being on a platform with a lot of people that maybe didn't know you, you didn't know? And I'm just curious what kind of thought process went into the things that you wanted to post? Yeah, uh, Glennon said it best. She said in her household, they have a term when you're uh, scared and you're excited, you're skited. <laughs> and I think that captures my emotions. I was excited about the opportunity. I thought it was a great opportunity to, again, um, go beyond my ecosystem, right? Like the people in my community know me, know what I stand for, but that's not enough. And so I was excited to be able to uh, extend that to your platform, but also nervous because... Um, it's a very tense time. Uh, there are a lot of people who believe very strongly, uh, whatever it is their beliefs are. And so anytime you try to move people to a place of understanding and they're not ready for that, you just never know what you're gonna get. And so I was a little stressed out um, trying to figure out, well, what am I gonna post? What am I gonna say? And then I think that the originally, um, when the campaign started, it was like, okay, we're gonna post on um, your person's feed once and then the rest of the post will be in the person's insta stories and you were like no unique i want your post on my feed whatever you have to say i want the people to hear it i want it to be visible and so i felt empowered by that but i also felt a little intimidated because i wanted to make sure uh that i spoke uh, with clarity and that i was very intentional and um every day you know you never know who you're gonna reach you never know which you, how your message might go out um into the world who it might get to. Um, but I knew that like you had almost a million followers. And so I wanted to make sure that I was very intentional about what I was saying to them. Well, I think you did a beautiful job. And I thought your posts were very honest and thought provoking and, and incredibly important. And I, you know, I'm wondering, I think that people are having conversations um, all over the country. And in fact, I think around the world. And, you know, what advice do you have? I think some people, um, they, they are afraid of, of having a conversation. They don't want to say the wrong thing. They uh, may get defensive because I think that's a very natural human reaction, unfortunately. We kind of, you know, get back on our heels. What kind of advice would you have for opening up these conversations for both sides, for everyone? In a, and I know you're like me. You, you try to teach from a place of compassion and a place of, understanding and persuasion and I think empathy. Mm -hmm. And I'm just wondering if you have any advice for how to broach these conversations. And then I'll tell you sort of my philosophy. 
Yeah. So I think um, number one is you have to be okay with being uncomfortable. I think that the only way we're going to get uh, closer to where we need to be is if everyone is okay with the concept of being uncomfortable, of uh, not really knowing what to say, not really uh, knowing how to feel, but knowing that like that discomfort means that something's working. And so you have to be okay with being uncomfortable. I think um, in addition to being okay with being uncomfortable, you have to seek to understand first and then seek to be understood, right? So if we have um, people in the black community that are expressing very real thoughts and feelings, um, sharing their experiences, I think that if you're on the other side and um, you know, we're talking about dismantling white supremacy and, and, and what comes uh, as a result of that, I think that everyone who's listening needs to try to understand first, right? Before trying to center themselves and, and, and be understood. And I think that that's really important. And if you come from that space, I think that you can hear one another. Um, but if everyone's trying to talk, then no one can listen. And I think that approaching it from that perspective is really important. I agree. And I think listening is so critically important and kind of taking it in before you react. Um, because sometimes I think it does require an extra step of really digging deep and understanding and putting yourself in that person's shoes. And I also think that vulnerability is important. I don't remember who was talking to me about this. I talked to so many people unique. Maybe you mentioned it. I can't even remember. But <laughs> the fact that, that, that you really want to try to understand, you really want to hear someone, and that I think one of the most important things is acknowledging the way we've all been culturally conditioned. Mm -hmm. You know? goes with with sort of the way systemic racism and the way the world is set up. You know, I, I did a documentary on Confederate statues. And I think even the way we were educated, I talked to some of my high school friends earlier today because we had a Zoom call and I'm curious what they thought. And they said, you know, we live in a bubble. I grew up in, I, you know, I told you in Arlington, Virginia and worked in Washington, D.C. So that's why I know Bowie. Um, but, but you know, that, that we're in such a bubble and these were things we never really considered. And the kind of education we got was really actually not uh, not an honest assessment of American history. Mm -hmm. And you know, when my daughters were in high school, they got history from Howard Zen. They got a much more holistic view of American history and we're not necessarily taught this mythology. So I think that sometimes we're a product of everything that we've ingested and all the images and messages that we have seen throughout our lives. And I think you have to realize you have to accept that, recognize it, and then unravel it. Absolutely. And I think you also have to just approach things from, from this point on with the idea of what if everything I was taught was a lie? Yeah. What if everything I was taught, I believed up until now was a lie? If you can approach it from that perspective, then you can be open to the process of unlearning the things that you've subscribed to and the things that you've held, held on to, right? Based on knowing that it's possible it was a lie or you didn't get the full truth. You didn't get the full picture, the whole perspective. Even on your page yesterday, you know, I was looking at some of the the comments to this particular post. And I'm just like, you know, some of it's just like, people just don't know because they weren't taught, right? And if I'm taught that it's not important for me to know this history, then I have to really be self-motivated to go and to seek it out for myself. But if I'm not taught that, and if that's not my foundation, then what's the motivation to do it? And if I'm okay without knowing what a black experience is, right? If I'm white, then like, what's the motivation? And so the, like, I think it's really just one being okay with unlearning. And then also I, you said something very interesting about the bubble. I think that's the problem, right? So um, when you look at all these ample, these people following, um, you know, people like myself, people like my peers, I think that's great. But I also think that that's still a bubble, right? I think, I think that that's still a bubble because that's a certain 
uh, caliber or certain type of individual that yeah. you are following based on a recommendation that someone gave you. You're saying, oh, okay, this person, um, I can learn from this individual because this individual, individual talks about A, B, and C, or this individual is an influencer, or whatever it is, right, that you've deemed important. But I think it's equally important to get out of that bubble and to go and follow some of my cousins. Go ahead and follow some of the individuals who don't speak like I speak. They don't talk like I talk. They don't walk like I walk. Their nails are different. Their hair is different. Um, how they um, express themselves is different. And how they present themselves on social media is different. They don't have a blue check or anything like that. But they still represent the Black experience. They still represent me. And I think that everyone has to be willing to follow those types of individuals, too, because then you'll see what your, what your bias really is. If I'm safe, right? Like, people might look at me and be like, oh, Unique's amazing, her beautiful family, she's awesome, she does this, she, you know, she's a speaker, she, that's great, but what does it look like to, to follow someone totally opposite of me who still looks like me? Do you still feel that way? Do you feel judgmental? Like, does something rise up in you? Because that's the same individual that you might come across in the street. That's the same individual that you might, that you might see when you're at the grocery store. And then how do you engage, interact with that person and still see their humanity? How do you right. see their value and understand that, like, they're still no different from you? And so I think that bubbles are so dangerous. And I think that we have to be really careful as we're, um, like, I was telling everyone to follow a page that I love called Black Archives because they really post the Black experience. Like, it's not polished. It's just what we mentioned the uncurated Black experience. Yes, like, follow that. Like, because when we can, it's great. I love my platform. I built it. But I also know people are like, this is, this is, this is all about Black excellence. But Black excellence isn't just relegated to acad people being um, PhDs or, you know, going to school or. Perfect. Or famous, right? Or being famous, like that's not all black excellence. Like black excellence shows up in so many different ways and who are we to define what that is, right? But I think that you have to be willing to subscribe to all pieces and, and parts of the, the black experience. And somebody put black archives, it's uh, black, the A's are V's. So it's black archives, but change the A's to a V. But yes, you have to, bubbles are just, bubbles are no good. So I think that we have to be careful not to, for all the people that are like, I got 20,000 followers, like that's great. But go and follow some of my cousins, right? So that we can get out of this, these bubbles, these safe bubbles. No, I think that's true for, for everyone. I really do. And I hope that you'll, you'll continue to engage with my followers. I happen to love my followers on Instagram. I don't know many of them. I don't really know. I know very few of them, of course, my friends I know. But um, I don't know. And, and of course, once in a while and I try to if somebody somebody asked me about Robert E. Lee today and I tried to explain why I didn't just think that he should be venerated in a public way in a in a town square because you know public spaces I think are illustrative of the values of a community mm -hmm. that offends members of the community or makes them feel less than or bad then that statue should not be up. And so it was very interesting. And I explained it to her and I said, please watch my documentary. And I would love to hear what you think after you learn the facts of when these statues were erected, mm -hmm. what the motivation behind them, how many schools were named after Confederate uh, officers after Brown versus Board of Education. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think that we all have a lot of uh, that we need to do and to help other people learn as well. And I know that, that you know, it's, it's everybody's personal responsibility to do that. But I think we're in this moment in time where, where everyone, I think, is realizing how, um, how uneducated they are and how uninformed and, and how dangerous that can be when you're out in the world and trying to express your perspective. So I was so grateful for even a day that you were able to make people think and to see things from your perspective. And, and as I said, I was just really, really grateful, Unique. And, and I hope that we can continue our friendship. Absolutely. Talking about things. And, uh, and, and so I wanted to um, mention a couple of your things that you're doing because you you know, people catch things at different times, but you started because of them, we can mm -hmm. 
why don't you explain to people who are watching um, about effort and about that company? Yeah, so because of them, we can started about seven years ago, almost eight years ago now, um, when I noticed that uh, I was just tired of the, the narrative in the media surrounding black people. And I wanted to create something to uh, really just build my kids' confidence and self-esteem up by giving them a strong foundation. And so I started taking pictures of young kids dressed as trailblazers, and that evolved over the years. And so Because When We Can Today is a platform that solely posts uh, positive Black news. It is, um, you know, you can, it's because of them as the handle, but it's all positive Black news. You don't have to be a celebrity to be celebrated. It's just if you are Black and you are doing something amazing, we are going to amplify it. We're going to post about it. We want the world to know because we don't have enough of that news. You know, I get questions all the time. Well, why is it just black news? It's because we, we need a space where we are centered in a positive way. Completely. No gossip. No, no, no fighting. Nothing. Just all positive because that's really who we are. It reflects who we are. It reflects our potential. And we need more images like that. For every negative image, for every negative story, we need about seven to 10 to cancel that out. And so I'm on a mission to cancel those negative stories out with because of them we can. And people can follow you, obviously, um, your personal Instagram, but you have a because of them Instagram as well. Absolutely. It's just at because of them. Uh, you'll scroll the feed. You'll see uh, positive black images, stories, amazing stories that I'm sure will inspire you. And that's the thing about because when we can, like, I don't care what race you are, it's the, the saying is still applicable. Because of them, you can too. Like, be clear, like, because of um, the trailblazers and the black community, so many of us benefit from the, the innovation, the genius, uh, the culture that we create. And so it's not just exclusive to black people. Everyone who's here benefits from black folks. So that's a space where it's all elevated. And, and, you know, I, I noticed one of the posts that you had a uh, man taught was teaching his son about protests through using his, his, uh, his dolls, right? His, yeah. his, oh, his so superhero dolls, right? Such a good way, right? He was, he wanted to, he wanted to take his son, he, his son wanted to go to the protest, but let's be clear, we're all protesting in a pandemic because we have two pandemics, right? And so he thought, like, what's a good way for me to teach my son? And he was like, his toys. And so he went and got all his toys. They got cardboard. They cut out these little protest signs. He let his son create his own. And they set up their own little protest in their backyard. And he was able to explain, you know, P is for protest. And this is what it means. And it was just a really good way to engage him on his level without exposing him to um, the actual uh, protests that were taking place in DC. So I thought that was like super positive and we're like, I'm trying to figure out how to explain it to my kids. It was just great. Like you have to do what works for you. And, and it was so creative too. That's what I loved about it. it you was, know, it was so clever. Well, you also do this other thing called, um, sorry, my phone was kind of getting low on juice. So I just had to uh, charge it for a minute. Also do a thing called culture tags. And yes. You're going to play that with me tonight before we go and I'm nervous because I don't think I'm very good at this game and I'm really competitive unique and I'm usually pretty good at games okay you know and I I take them super seriously so let's let I'm gonna try to just take a deep breath you okay. know just center yourself <laughs> okay. all right you know, take a deep breath so let me explain the game to you um you uh, everybody who's watching, please help me if with the clues. Yes, please help, help. Okay, Katie. I, I, this game is about culture, so you know you could be black, brown, white, whatever, and play this game. But it's centered right. around black culture. So all my friends that are here, y'all help Katie out if she needs some help. So I'm gonna give you. I, um, I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna show you an acronym, right? I'm gonna show you a card. Well, oh. remember though, they're 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 backwards. No, they're not. So these are fine. Oh, okay. I had them printed backwards so that they would show okay. up correctly. Uh -huh. I can't. Yes. All right. So there's no excuse, Katie. Okay. okay. So I'm going to tell you the category. I'm going to show you the car. It's a culture tag. I'm going to give you a hint. Okay. You're going to try to figure out what it says. If you don't know it, look in your comments, and somebody will help you. Okay, let me ask you before we start though, Unique, what was the what was the genesis of culture tags? Yeah, so um, 
I was really just uh, back last year. I, I wanted to develop a game because I, I didn't feel like our community has like enough games, right? I'm like, we need more games that we can play that resonate with us, um, that center like black culture, but everyone can play. And I, I was online one day and I saw this like really long acronym. It was like really long, Katie, and I could read it. I looked at it and I knew what it meant. I was, I, I, was, I shocked myself. And I saw like hundreds of comments where people were like, oh my gosh, I know what that says. And I was like, this is a game. Like all these people commenting, like they're playing a game. And I was like, I went, I saw Lovey in Chicago and I played with her. Like we were writing down different uh, acronyms and, and she's like, you gotta do it. And so after I left her, I went and I started just jotting down all these different acronyms. And I was like, I need something to call it. And I'm like, you know, you got hashtags. And I'm like, culture tags. And so um, here we are, I got this idea in October worked all uh, throughout the holiday season in December, launched the Kickstarter February 1st, and uh, we just signed a distribution deal. We have a distribution. Wow. We're going to retail. We're going That's to Amazon. Uh, we're doing big things in less than six months. It's been amazing. So, wow. oh, look at you. You are quite the entrepreneur. Everyone's yeah. a of stalling. I'm not stalling, everyone. I really it's okay. Whatever works. Whatever works, Katie should know what this is all about absolutely um okay you ready all right the first category is words to live by okay oh, so God. this is something that um when someone talks about karma about the energy that what goes around comes around eh, yes, <laughs> yes, yes okay okay all right <laughs> okay this is something that um, if your friend is holding a grudge, you might tell them not to do that because look at the look at the culture tag so you can let it let it. You might tell them if someone's like upset and you're like, you need to move on because it's about um, like you don't know when you're going to leave this earth, right? You don't know when you're going to leave this earth. <laughs> you don't know if you're going to live oh, forever. You are uh, gonna live forever, so oh, look, look, look at the content tag, Katie. You gotta. I am. I am. I am. Oh, like, life is too short. Yes, life is too I, short. Someone help me. All right, that's that's fine. Okay, let's Thank do another. You. Thank you guys for helping let's, me. Let's do another one. Um, oh. so yeah, that was dumb of me. I'm sorry. I'm no, it's fine. You just okay. this is your first time playing. No okay. pressure. No pressure. All right, so you're a mom. <laughs> out you're a mom right so let's say if you tell when you're kids, because i said so yes oh <laughs> oh i didn't even do the hit okay okay all right i got i gotta take my jacket off because i'm getting kind of hot <laughs> okay here we go are you ready you ready yeah. all right so this category this is the black twitter category okay i'm gonna give you the hint this way if there is music playing on the radio and you love what you hear, it's your favorite artist, you might say, oh my gosh. I love that song. Oh, I love this song. <laughs> see, see, see. It's I love this song. People say I love this song when um someone find it, when justice is served. We on Twitter we say, I, lo I love this song. Oh, All right, that's... here's another one. This is a little harder. Okay. If I tell you, Katie. I have something to show you. I am going to do X. You might say, because you, it. say it again. I would love to see it. I would like to see it. Yeah. Ooh, Katie, you, 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 <laughs> you, 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 all right, I'm gonna give you two more. Boom. I'm gonna give you two more, okay? All right. Okay. This category is TV and film. This, if, did you ever watch Family Matters back in the day, Steve Urkel used to ask this question all the time. Come on. It was a nerd. He had glasses and suspense. Remember Urkel. What did Urkel, what was the question Urkel asked? Friendly with his pants. Um, do I. If he made a mistake, he would say. Did I do that? Yes. Yes. Someone, <laughs> I cheated. Someone told me. <laughs> All right, last one, last one. Um, I like this. I like this one. Dad. This is okay. a good one. This is a good one to end on. 
Oh, my friend, my friend Dana's watching, so she's gonna help me out. Dana. All right, Dana. Okay. Her out. Um, this is the this is the words to live by category. This is something when something bad happens, but some good can come out of it. You might say. Everything happens for a reason. Katie, everything happens for a reason. And the good that's come out of it is this right here. You shared the mic with me. We're on live. You're playing culture tags. We're going to develop a relationship. We're going to grow this. And we're going to make it amazing. So thank you, you for playing. You are so cute. You're a natural. You're <laughs> so great. Um, you told me uh, that you'd like media training from me, but I think I could get media training from you. Let's do it. We'll swap. Yeah, that would be, well, maybe you can take over my Instagram account another time. Let's do and it. Please, everybody, um, give Unique some love on my account because it took a lot of courage for her to uh, open up her heart and her sizable brain to everybody who follows me. And um, it's just been such a joy for me to meet you, Unique. And I hope that we'll continue to continue talking and being friends. We we text each other, so yeah. that's fun. And please well. love to your family. And um, I I hope Chris didn't have to like monitor the comments too much. <laughs> no, yeah, Co Chris is uh, definitely someone who jumps in the comments to fight for his wife, but he stayed I, away, he stayed away. I love that. My husband, I we were talking about that. He does the same thing. He just gives it right back, but I try to kind of ignore all the, all the trolls and the haters because I feel like they're not worth our our energy. I don't, our energy, yeah, they don't deserve the energy or the time of day. <laughs> anyway, all right, Unique. Well, thank you again. And everybody, thanks for watching. We should play culture tags again. Let's and do it. Maybe I could make up some culture tags for you. You should make up some. So the great thing about culture tags, and if anybody's watching and they want the game, you can go to culturetags.com. Katie, I'm going to put you a, a copy in the mail tomorrow so that you can have it because it's also a study guide. You can learn the culture by looking at the tags. But um, we're going to do expansion packs. So we're going to make sure that all cultures are represented through oh. culture tags. It's going to expand. And so it's going to be amazing. Everyone will see themselves in this game. And uh, I think it's going to, I think it's going to be a big hit. So thank That's you. so awesome. And such a fun way to learn about people without, without it necessarily feeling like spinach. You know, yeah. I think it's fun. Eat the spinach, by the way. I'm not. You need it. it. Also, um, someone just said, I didn't know you got married. I did get married. Finally, I got married again after my husband died. I got married seven years ago and my aunt is actually on June 21st. So that's Chris's birthday. That's a great day. Oh, really? Yeah. Good, good, good stuff. Summer solstice. Yes, absolutely. So the longest day of the year. And, the, and John, my husband, thought there was something actually very... Um, appropriate about that i'm not sure if that was good or bad but anyway <laughs> unique thank you and everybody thank you so much for for hanging out with us tonight thank you katie this was great appreciate it right. bye everyone see you soon bye everybody